we must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting! A malediction. This way. Senora, it is too late. Go. Senor, in here. Search them. Of course. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance, more. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, Shosh. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move! No, monsieur! Not la malediction. Oh. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. One minute I'd been planning dinner with Nico, the next I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. Poor guy. There was a small piece of paper in the dead man's hand. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m., be ready. Innocent enough until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note.
a cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I needed to find where he kept his records. With luck, the security camera had captured the robbery. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. It was the speaker cone for the alarm. It hadn't sounded when the painting was stolen. It looked fine to me. That wasn't the reason the alarm didn't go off. So, the alarm wasn't broken. I suspected foul play. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. Hmm. A rare glimpse into the absinthe addled mind of the artist. A snip at only 80 grand. The alarm on that painting hadn't been sabotaged. So what made the stolen one so special? The stolen painting was called La Maledexio, painted by someone called El Serp in 1937 and worth just 40 grand. The stolen painting was worth less than the others. So why did the thief target it? The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Well, no surprise there, pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. No one had noticed the pizza box fall onto the floor. I decided to leave it alone. It was Hector Lane, France's greatest art critic. We'd met before. It hadn't ended well. For a moment, I thought he was dead. But from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. Lane was out cold. I was going to need something to bring him around. Lane had fainted. Even unconscious, Lane's body reacted to food. Time to awaken the beast. <coughs> what? What was that? It smells like... like the 70s. Where am I? You fainted. The nail clippers were monogrammed with the letters HL. 
Hector Lane. They must have fallen out of his pocket. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I've had a terrible shock, you know. I found a slice of pizza. I asked for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now what's been going on? Oh, Henri, is he dead? Afraid so. Poor chap. Just like him to steal the limelight, though. Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed in the Glees Gallery. Of course, the man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. <laughs> I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. Do you know anything about the stolen painting? Of course, dear boy. La Maledicio, a little-known work, turned up at the last minute. What about the killer? Were you able to get a look at him? A delinquent in a tin hat. Beyond that, I don't really recall. Oh, yeah, you fainted. Those of us with a higher aesthetic are more sensitive to violence. What can you tell me about the stolen painting? La Maledicio? A challenging piece. If you like a wide cast of obscure saints and fringe Christian symbolism, of course. Not especially valuable, though. The thief won't get much for it on the black market. So you curated the exhibition? What's it about? A brilliant retrospective. A dialectical window on European art's ongoing discourse with the unresolved psychoses of the nation-state. Wow, you took the words right out of my mouth. Who painted the stolen painting? Therein lies a mystery. We only know his pseudonym, El Serp. He was a Catalan, a modernist. His works are symbolic, religious. How long had you known Henri? As a friend, many years. Our professional relationship had only recently blossomed into this exhibition under my curatorial wing. And now the poor fellow has gone and got himself killed. How about some more of this? I don't think so. As a cell volatile, it was acceptable. As a cologne, it would be barbaric. Are these your nail clippers? Of course. See, they're monogrammed with my initials. Someone had cut a wire and sabotaged the alarm. The door was locked with a keypad. If I wanted to get in there and look at the CCTV footage, then I'd need to find the number. Lane worked with Henri, so he was likely to know the code.
I need to ask you a few more questions. If you insist. I'm still in shock, you know. So, you help run this place? Maybe you can give me the code to that door. The code to the office? I just thought you might have the number. I do, but I couldn't possibly give you access before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that. Mr. Lane, this robbery is not going to reflect well on you. As I said, I shall take my chances. You're not getting that door code. Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? Are these your nail clippers, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have my initials monogrammed on them. Huh. The perfect implement for cutting the alarm on the stolen painting. What are you saying? Well, the alarm was sabotaged, Mr. Lane. It was an inside job. Are you accusing me? How dare you? I had no reason to kill Henri, no motive whatsoever. Okay, but I don't think the cops will see it like that. And I sure would like that door code. This is an inside job for sure, Mr. Lane. The police are going to be very interested in your recent movements. I've been out of town for several days. And last night, I retired early. Just saying. You're not going to scare me into giving you that door code, you know. I was onto something here, and I knew it. Lane was sweating. It wasn't pretty. Excuse me. Monsieur? There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh, really? You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur. And all art is property. Therefore, all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Oh, that must have been Nico. You know her? You surprised me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, he is inherently unknowable. No wonder this guy's cafe was empty. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? He spent little time at the cafe, unlike his friend, monsieur Lane. What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. He drinks here sometimes. 
He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What sort of time? After midnight, for sure. If you see him, give him this bill and tell him to pay up next time. The check was from last night. But Lane told me he was nowhere near the gallery. This could be the leverage I needed to get the office door code from Lane. What do you know about Le Lizard Bleu? It's bourgeois, vacuous, and overpriced. Just like its curator Lane. He's always in here, you know, talking art to his latest flusier. Do you recognize these? They are nail clippers. Would you like a squirt of this? Are you suggesting a smell, monsieur? No, sorry. Thank you for your consistent indifference, monsieur. Perhaps next time you come, I will give you a coffee. Perhaps not. How about it, Mr. Lane? Ready to give me the door code yet? Certainly not. Give me a single reason why I should. Guilty by way of nail clippers. I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? Take a look at this. What of it? It's your bill from the cafe next door. So? It's dated yesterday. Last night, in fact. 12.30 to be exact. You said you were out of town. You sure drank a lot of champagne last night without paying the bill. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but that sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. All right. You have me. The number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. I had the code. The police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. What was that number again? 642... No. Everyone, hold it right there. Damn it. I am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad, and I hereby declare this crime scene open. I mean, closed. Now, nobody move, especially you on the floor. Move, I want a total lockdown. Nobody in or out, apart from me, of course. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Mou. Our paths had crossed before. Sergeant Mou, we meet again. Aha, Madame Collard, an unexpected pleasure. I was in the gallery at the time of the theft. Can I get back in? I am sorry, but I am under strict orders from Inspector Nave. Uh, nobody in, uh, nobody out. And I must correct you, madame. It is no longer just a theft. It is a murder. Mon Dieu! That poor man! Who is Inspector Nave? Ah, the most promising young investigator on the force. A genius, a man blessed with almost superhuman insight. He sounds highly perspicacious. Madame, it is 
Not for us to talk about the inspector's sweaty proclivities. He is about to solve his third case in as many days. So, what's he got that the other investigators don't have? Blood spatter. He is the world expert. He reads the entrails of the crime scene like a book. Here's my press card. Do you have a statement for the paper? Yes, madam. Stay away from the crime scene and let the police do their job. And always leave a light on when you go out at night. I witnessed the crime. I've got to get back in there. I'm sure you can make an official statement in good time. I saw the thief. I think I can help the investigation. I am implacable, Madame Gola. I chased after the shooter and got a photo of him. Inspector Nave will be delighted. You've got to let me into the gallery to show him. Absolutely not. So, I cannot go in without Inspector Nave's permission? No. And to get Inspector Nave's permission, I need to go in. Exactement. Have you ever heard of Kafka, Sergeant Mu? Madame Gola, I do not see what soccer players have to do with this. No, he's a... Never mind. Thanks a lot, Sergeant Mu. You've been so helpful. The body was still in there. I had to get back inside. It was an office. The room was full of strange trinkets. The pissoir was decorative and unpleasant. Hi, Georges. I'm outside the gallery. Thank God you're safe, Nico. Inspector Mu is out here and he's not letting me in. I managed to grab a couple of photos, but the guy got away. Poor Ori is dead. I know. Why kill him? I've been trying to find out. Turns out the alarm was tampered with. Looks to me like an inside job. So, no ordinary robbery? Madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Whatever it is you want, we are closed. Then why are you standing here? You would not understand, madame. Try me. Because I look at you, and I know you are like all the others. The others? The pretty women who shop, who gossip, who have their spa days, their almond croissant. <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> And the men with their grooming products and their shiny shoes and their skinny suits who come to my cafe and ask me for lattes, macchiatos, frappe. I see your point. Is this what we fought on the barricades for, madame? Ripped up the paving slabs, bled on the streets. Isn't it? No, madame, it is not. We fought for ideas, for philosophy, for freedom, equality. Fraternity. Vive la Revolution. And do you know what drove us on as we fought? What fueled the streets of Paris in that glorious spring? What made our hearts soar? Uh, cheap wine and free sex? No, madame, no! It was French Café Noir that inspired us. The simple demitas, The black, sweet taste of freedom. So that's why you closed? Yes, madame. I serve only thinkers, philosophers, revolutionaries. 
and you, madame, with your polite top and your pointy ears, are none of those things. This is a cafe. Yes, to the right people. On any other day, I would have given this guy a straight one to the chin. But there was a chance he could help me get into the gallery. Monsieur. Life is fleeting, madame. The sands of time are running through your fingers. Well, that may be, but... We know not what we want, and yet we are responsible for what we are. There's been a crime. That is terrible, madame. But you know what they say. No, but I think you're going to tell me. Life begins on the other side of despair. C'est vrai, no? Well, I guess so. He was pushing me to the point of despair. During the riots, we battled the forces of oppression. Oh, really? That must have been terrifying. It was. Except that they made me stay behind the barricades with the other baristas. We made coffee by the litre to fuel the resistance. I've never brewed so much coffee. Of course, our brave heroes spent half their time going for a pee. But with our coffee inside them, they fought the running dogs all night long. None of this was helping me get past Sajan Mou. Au revoir. An intricate stained glass window, irresistible to any tourist. The menu offered black coffee and a small selection of other drinks. Monsieur. The road to enlightenment is a long one, madame. Perhaps you will walk that road with me. Au revoir. Here's my press card. La liberté. Madame, you are not the person that I took you to be. You must accept my deepest, my most profound apologies. Well, of course I accept. But why? La liberté. The great journal of freedom. At the height of the battle, as the tear gas blew and the blood flowed, it was La Liberté which carried the voice of our revolution to the world. I know now that you are not the kind of woman who would ask me for almond croissant. You are a true daughter of France, and I am your humble servant. Monsieur. Madame. Could we have a little chat? Any time, madame. Did you see anything happen at the gallery earlier? I saw you running after a pizza delivery guy. Somebody said he killed someone. That's true. He stole a painting and shot the gallery owner. Uh, how close we are to death. And yet how far from ever comprehending it. Hmm, well, right now I need to get back inside and figure out what happened. I applaud you, madame. To seek the truth is a worthy ambition. As a journalist, that is my duty. How about some coffee? For you, madame, of course. There is only one coffee that I can serve you. Black, strong, and in a tiny cup. 
One moment. Here is your coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. The coffee was hot and strong. The waiter didn't need to see my press card again. An intricate stained glass window, irresistible to any tourist. Salut. Bonjour, madame. Do you want to see my photo of the thief? Ils ne passeront pas. I really need to get into the gallery and speak to Inspector Nave. Tat tat. He is not to be disturbed. He is applying his famous scientific methods. Any moment now, the case will be cracked. I certainly hope so. I am dog tired and want to go home. This was madness. Sergeant Mu wasn't going to let me in. Why are you so tired, Sergeant Mu? I have been working for three days with no rest. Nave is a genius in his field, and he assumes that we all have his energy and vigor. Oh, you poor man. If you'd like to go and get some sleep, I will watch the door for you. That's very thoughtful of you. Ha! A cunning attempt to make me a deserter, madame. A gendarme? Never leaves his post. Well, how about a hot drink? Ah, that would do the trick for sure. Unfortunately, I mustn't drink on duty. My doctor specifically warned me against it after the last... Uh, incident. That incident you mentioned, what happened exactly? I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is, it was very... unfortunate. I am on duty, and I need to focus. Sergeant Mu could do with one of those famous coffees. Thanks a lot, Sergeant Mu. You've been so helpful. Monsieur. Madame. Could we have a little chat? Any time, madame. Would you make me a coffee to go? For a fellow revolutionary? Of course, madame. One moment. Here's your takeaway coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur.
Sergeant Moore, I brought you a coffee. Coffee? Fantastic. Just what I need. But wait. I must not. My little p p p problem. I'm sure one little cup of coffee won't hurt. I'm tempted, madame, but I cannot risk it. I am sorry. So, this incident, it involved you, some coffee, and your... A little problem? It is a tale of woe, madame. I'm all here, sergeant. Well, since you seem quite understanding, I shall elaborate. Please do. I was in charge of canine security for the president himself. Uh, one day, en vacances, he went for a private discussion with a lady minister. I stayed alone with his dog, but I had drunk a coffee to stay awake, and nature came to call. So I tied the dog to a tree and went for a secret pee-pee. When I came back, the dog was having a liaison dangereux with the lady minister's terrier. But how did they find out? Well, two months later, the President's Labrador gave birth to six beautiful mongrels. And I was busted to sergeant just after the President's divorce came through. You are a victim of a great injustice, sergeant. You think so? But of course. You knew you must not fall asleep at your post. You were guarding the President himself. Well, the President's dog. Ah, it was the same thing. Yes, I suppose. And by drinking that coffee, you made the ultimate sacrifice for our glorious Republic. Your career. Hmm. How you put it like that? And now France is calling you again. She is saying, drink, Sergeant Mou, drink! She is? She is. Drink or fall asleep at your post. Which is it to be? I suppose it is drink? Bravo, Sergeant! Oh dear. Oh dear. Excuse me, madame. I must use the petit gendarme's room. It has gone straight through me. Could you watch the gallery door for me? Oh, you can count on me, sergeant. I distracted Mu. It was now or never. How did you get past Sergeant Mu? Huh. Well, you won't fool me so easily, madame. I shall question you later. Nico, am I glad to see you. So, what's the problem? The inspector's watching me like a hawk. I'll never get in without some sort of distraction. I'll see what I can do. Inspector Nave, do you have a moment? My time is of the essence. Be quick now. Why don't you check out the security camera footage? Madame, that is not my area of expertise. It is the body which concerns me. But the CCTV footage is evidence. It could help identify the killer. Correction, madame. It is but an indicator. The only true evidence is bodily fluid. Unless you know something I don't, then please leave me be. The only evidence Inspector Nave seemed to appreciate involved gore. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence or 
concoct some, and the bloodier, the better. The tomato sauce had splattered on the floor. I spread some of this sauce around with my shoe. It looked a little bit like a blood stain, but it still wasn't right. If I was going to distract the cop, I had to get rid of that gum. No. That would never have worked. I scraped up the chewing gum with my press card, hoping the inspector wouldn't notice. Inspector! Yes? Have you seen the stain on the floor over there? It looks like blood. Indeed. How very curious. I must investigate immediately, before one of these idiots steps in it. Interesting. Maybe it is time to employ the machine. Okay, Georges. That should distract him for a while. Nice work, Nico. I'll let you know what I find in the office. I was sure the inspector hadn't seen me slip away, but I needed to be quick because it wouldn't take him long. Sorry, Mr. Rickenbacker. I, I've been busy. Yeah, I damn well hope so. I'm watching the news. Oh, uh, anything interesting? Yeah, someone stole a painting. Oh, really? And it was one you insured. What's going on? Ah, uh, yes. Well, the guy was armed, sir. So? You think I should have thrown myself in front of the thief, wrestled him to the ground, got myself shot? that painting or give me a good reason not to pay out please tell me that you have some leads i'm working on it the cctv system was ancient it took individual shots and recorded them to tape it looked like i needed to enter a passcode to view the recording I tried the door code, no luck. Hmm, I needed to find a four digit number. The calendar looked like a child's school project. Henri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Poor guy hadn't quite made it to his big day. Thank you. 
I rewound the tape to before the robbery. This was the first interesting frame. It was Henri studying La Maledixio. He couldn't have had any idea what was about to happen. The image was a little fuzzy, but in the center of the painting was what looked like a snake eating its own tail. I thought about what the priest said. There was definitely something unsettling about the picture. Was Henri studying that picture, or did he look worried? There was definitely more to this robbery than I first thought. Nico and I were taking a look at La Maledixio just before the robbery. Funny, the painting didn't strike me as remarkable at the time. Just odd. A good view of La Maledixio. I could kind of see why Father Simeon thought it was evil. There was a certain presence about it. The killer caught in the act. There was nothing really distinctive about him. The CCTV had caught the killer in the act of lifting La Maledixio from the wall. He knew exactly which painting to take. The moment it all went horribly wrong. There was some writing on the front of his helmet, but I couldn't quite make it out. The writing was just a blur. The killer making his getaway. A logo on the front of his helmet read Waterloo Motors. That could be useful. The painting was gone. There I was, taking a look at the alarm box. Hopefully I didn't look too suspicious. I hadn't thought about that when I was taking a look at the camera. That was the last shot. I'd probably learned everything I could from the CCTV. There was nothing else in the drawer. The folder looked interesting. This was very definitely tampering with evidence. It was a completion of work notice from a company called Vera Security. They weren't the guys we'd recommended. 
Henri had gone behind our backs to choose a different security outfit. Huh. I'd never heard of Vera Security, but there was an address and phone number on the form. George Stobart here, Paris Mutual. Never heard of you. Really? Well, I'm surprised. Uh, we're leaders in our field in commercial insurance, and our brand recognition is... Do me a favor. Don't call back. The lady hung up. I was going to have to visit in person. The sofa had clearly taken some punishment over the years. The statue was jaunty. Up close and personal, I could see that the fig leaf was hinged. Thankfully, there was no one around to see me do this. Very interesting. The secret compartment was open. There was no need to manhandle Henri any further. I opened the compartment again. I wasn't going to open the safe without the key. I was fairly sure that even Henri wouldn't be silly enough to keep it hidden in the office. In the trash can, I found a crumpled letter from Henri's credit card company, demanding immediate payment. It listed extravagant purchases from a variety of ladies' fashion stores. The address indicated that Henri lived in the chic and expensive 16th arrondissement of Paris. I decided to put the letter back. Henri's financial problems weren't my business. But now I knew where he lived. Monsieur, sir, you have snuck in here, and now you are tampering with my evidence.
I wasn't tampering with anything. I was just looking for clues. That is my job, Monsieur... Monsieur... Stobart. George Stobart. Paris Mutual. We insured the exhibition. Oh, really? So, you have plenty to gain from the robbery. Well, uh, no. We have plenty to lose from the robbery. Don't patronize me, monsieur. Only a fool wouldn't know how insurance works. Yeah, no flies on you, inspector. Exactly. I have to get up very early in the morning, which means I can be sure to catch the worm. So I see. May I remind you, monsieur, that a serious crime has been committed. I am going to have to ask you to return to the gallery. Of course, but I do need to ask you a few questions. D'accord, but remember, anything you say can be used against you, Monsieur Stobart. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. It's very likely that the security camera holds a clue to the killer's identity. Monsieur, I am a professional, and you are an amateur. So, leave the investigating to me, huh, pal? Do you know anything about a company called Vera Security? No, I have never heard of them. Now, I must get on with my investigation. Monsieur, you are American, no? Yeah, California born and bred. Of course. I think perhaps you are wanting to be like that Starsky and Butch, monsieur. No? Rolling around on top of fast cars with beautiful ladies. Firing your gun. Interesting idea, Inspector, but not really my style. Indeed. Well, let me tell you something, monsieur. You are my prime suspect. You may go now, but I will need to speak with you again. I had some valuable leads. But before following up on them, I had important business to attend to. Hey, Nico. You want to grab a quick cup of coffee? Sure. I am pleased to announce that I have finished my preliminary investigation. This is now an official crime scene, and you must all go. I shall be questioning all of you again in the coming days. Nobody is to leave the country, particularly you, Monsieur Stobart. Monsieur Lane will stay behind to help secure the premises. Mo? Yes, Inspector. Let them out. Right away, sir. Two coffees, please. Nice work in there, Nico. Whatever you did, it worked. I just made a tiny distraction, and Nave bought it. I think Nave would buy anything if it had blood on it. You know, this whole setup, the theft, the murder, it just doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Like I said, I think it was an inside job. Go on. Someone disabled the alarm, but on just one painting. Let me guess. La Maledictio. Exactly. And I aim to find out who did it.
Well, the priest thinks La Maledicio is evil. Charles, she's just crazy. Yeah, you're probably right. But there's something strange going on. The CCTV picked up an image of the thief. His helmet had the words Waterloo Motors written across it. Interesting. I think I got a couple of good shots of him, too. But I need to take a better look at them at home. Great. Let me know what you find. I found the address of the security company Henri employed. It was not the one that I recommended. Good luck with your investigations. Well, I guess I should go. This story won't write itself. And Georges? Yeah? It's good to see you again. Great to see you too, Nico. I watched her walk away. The sound of traffic, the sun shining, a crime to solve. And Nico, back in my life. The address led me to a dead-end alley at the end of a deadbeat mall. No wonder I'd never heard of Vera Security.
Help! What's wrong? There's a monster. What? Where? On the floor. Get rid of it. Oh, the cockroach. Yes, the cockroach. Help! Come here, little fella. There were crumbs on the floor. No wonder the cockroach was sticking around. Romanovs, a Russian brand cigarette. The pack was empty. As a child, I'd always been told not to play with matches, but I never could resist.
I emptied the matchbox, but decided to hold on to the matches. I couldn't catch it just by swiping at it. I'd need to entice it closer. I set down my matchbox. Cockroaches like hiding in dark places. Not a bad idea when you think about it. Hmm. Cockroach wasn't going for it. I needed some bait. Hello, I'm George Stobart. Call me Bassam. And do please forgive me, but I'm in no mood to talk. I have a resounding headache. Bad migraine, eh? The worst. The buzzing and flashing from the old sign is killing me. I thought the neon sign had potential until it broke. Is it your sign? No, the previous owners it used to be a restaurant. But this is horrible. Adversely affecting my footfall and giving me a splitting headache. You want me to try fixing that sign for you? Do you know what you're doing? I'm very good at fixing things. Then please do. I'm no good at electricals. Marketing analysis and predicting trends is more my thing. I took a good look at the sign. 
The wiring was exposed and the cover broken. No wonder it was flashing. I pulled the wire off. Well, that was one way to stop the letters flashing. Now only half the sign was illuminated. The buzzing and flashing has stopped. And I am very grateful. But the sign still looks pretty terrible, doesn't it? When you're building a brand from the ground up, name is everything. I need a name that makes my customers long for adventure and treasures from faraway places. Tell me about your business idea. This stall is going to put me through college, while giving me field experience. But the nonsense sign is working against me. It should spell a name for my shop. I need something original, yet familiar, bright and in your face, yet subtle and symbolic. I could take a look at your sign, come up with something. You are like a genie from a magic lamp. Seem the letters could be moved around. I'd have to think of something else. How about this? I know it's not your name, but 
Aladdin. Very cool. <laughs> That's a terrific name for my store. Hits every one of my USBs. Glad you like it. You're a genius, George. Let me know if I can do anything for you. Aha, Mr. Stobart. What can I do for you? Do you happen to know a good way to catch a cockroach? To be honest, George, I'm better at questions on balancing budgets within a liberal economic framework. But as a layman, perhaps I could suggest you trap it? And please, whatever you do, don't squish it. Why is that? The entire family will catch the scent and arrive for the funeral. Ooh, we don't want that. You need to find a container of some sort. Then I think add this. Rich tea. Oh, what's that, a cookie? The perfect cockroach biscuit. Dry, dull, unsatisfying, and yet curiously Moorish. I'll give it a try. Glad to help. I added some bait to the matchbox. <laughs> Even I was finding it hard to resist that little trap.
gotcha. You are a gentleman and no mistake. I hate cockroaches. Always ready to help a damsel in distress. I bet you are. Can I help you? Yes, please. Do you know if there's anyone in the office I can talk business with? Yes, me, Sherry. I'm Annette, the manager. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean... The gloves. I just thought... Ah, easy mistake to make. If you haven't been reconstructed, that is. Oh, but I have been reconstructed. A number of times. From the ground up. Yes. There's been a theft at Le Lizard Bleu. A painting's been stolen. Shame. Still, I'm sure you'll get over it. I believe your company set up the security. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, yes, you did. Didn't. Did. I've got all day. But I didn't. It says here that Vera was hired to do the security of the gallery. Didn't do a very good job, did you? Where did you get that? At the gallery. That job was signed off. You can't say we were to blame. I was getting a bad feeling. The place looked like a front, and the only person there wasn't helping. Maybe the office itself could give me more information. Are you done? Only I want to listen to this next race. Thanks. Hello, Vera Security. We make you secure. Oh, wrong number again. Damn your nuisance calls. I wanted to see what secrets the book might contain. It was a photo. Of course, I grabbed it. A very bad photo of Lane and Annette. That guy sure got around. Recognize this? Hey, that's my photo. That's you with Lane, I believe. So, what if it is? What is he to you? Oh, my Hector, that's what he is. My little Hector. Yeah, I thought you said you had nothing to do with the gallery. Look, here's how it is. I've only been here a few weeks. 
I had nothing to do with that gallery job. I just delivered the paperwork. So, who was the manager before you? I don't know. She just, one day, didn't come in for work. I shouldn't be talking to you. The boss told me to keep my mouth shut. Yes. The boss. Have you got his number or address? No, I've forgotten it. I mean, I never knew it. Annette, a serious crime has been committed. You're in a lot of trouble. I had nothing to do with it. Look, I need this job. I need the money. Anyway, it's only a silly old painting. No one got hurt. The gallery owner was shot. Badly? Yeah, he's pretty dead. Oh. This is a murder investigation. Now, who's your boss? I don't know. Honest, he faxes me if he wants anything. He? Who's he? I've never seen him, never met him. Hmm. Don't make trouble for poor Annette. Thanks. I was pretty sure Annette had told me all she was going to. She sounded scared. Time to put the thumb screws on Lane, and I knew just how. Time to confront Lane. The gallery was sealed off. The place looked empty. Lane wasn't exactly easy to miss, and it looked like he wasn't around. Hi. Monsieur. I'm looking for Mr. Lane. Has he been here? Ah, oh, yes, monsieur. He came by earlier. Told me he was off to console Henri's widow. I hope she's out.
So Lane was consoling the widow. What a big heart that guy had. Did he have a grand scheme or just loose morals? This is George Stobart. May I come up? I'm sorry. This is a very inconvenient time. Come back later. I know that's you, Mr. Lane. I need to talk to you. Mr. Lane, does the name Annette mean anything to you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. If you don't let me in, I'll tell the police about your interesting connection to the security company. Dear Lord George, you have the worst timing. Is this a bad time to accuse you of lying? What do you want? I've just come from Vera Security. So? I'm surprised you let your conquests keep souvenirs. Where did you get that? Annette lent it to me. Quit waving it around, for God's sake. Come on, Lane. Tell me about Annette. All right, all right. I had a fling with her, okay? Now keep your voice down, please. And you two fixed the security for the robbery? No, nothing like that. Anyway, the, the fling was a mistake. She turned out to be rather needy. I believe you. You're not a criminal. Just a lecherous old man. Less of the old, if you don't mind. As it happens, I make a lot of women happy. Especially when you leave them. Can you tell me anything about the owner of Vera? Annette told me he's some angry-looking Russian chap. Okay, Lane. Take off. You can't tell me what to do. You want me to show Bijou this picture? All right, all right, I'm going. You haven't heard the last of me, Stobart. Promise? And give me that photo! If Lane was telling the truth, that meant that Annette was lying. She said she'd never met the owner and was very keen to get rid of me. I wondered if she was hiding something interesting in that back office. Are you going to introduce yourself properly? Pleased to make your acquaintance, madame. My name's George Stobart. Call me Bijou. Hello, young man. Such a delight to have a new visitor. What can I do for you? I'm from the insurance company. I'm so sorry for your loss. Henri, 
my poor Sauvage. He died in his prime. Could I just ask you a few questions? Well, why not? A little company might just pep me up, as you Americans might say. Your record player seems to be stuck on the same song. Yes, this song gives me great comfort. It reminds me of Henri. Henri was very brave at the gallery. He tried to stop the thief and paid the ultimate price. Henri was my lion and my little pussycat. How are you coping? I'm still trying to take it in, Sherry. Can you tell me about the gallery? Was the business doing well? The gallery was Henri's baby. He never spoke to me about it. So you weren't involved? Not at all. Business is not my thing. Bijou, I think someone involved with the gallery helped the thief. It wasn't Hector Lane. He's not devious enough. But who is? I don't know. But I will get to the bottom of it, I promise you. Thank you for your help, Bijou. My pleasure, young man, to come back any time. I still couldn't discount. Annette, on the other hand, had lied about Vera's security's owner. Henri was now dressed in a cheap suit. On balance, I prefer the waistcoat.
Night was falling. Annette would have left for the evening. It was time to pay a visit to Vera Security. The empty mall was lit by bright moonlight, the perfect ambiance for a little detective work. I wanted a good look at that back office. I just had to find a way in. All Bassam's stuff was safely locked away. The empty box had been left out overnight. No one would have wanted to steal it. The box was in the perfect position to access the beam above. I popped the lid open. Inside was an air con unit and, bingo, the master controls for the shutters.
In the drawer was a single Q-tip. It was my lucky day. It hadn't been used. The room was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. corner of the room was a pizza delivery scooter, just like the one the killer had escaped on. Oil had dripped from the scooter onto the floor. I smeared some oil onto the cotton bud. There was a letter jammed in the shredder. The shredder was jammed. I tried to free the gears, but they were jammed solid. Its service was long overdue. I smeared the gears with oil. It was time to see what was in the letter. I grabbed the paper clip.
It was the letter from Henri confirming that Vera Security had the contract for the exhibition. And it also revealed who was in charge at Vera, a guy called Madofsky. At first glance, it all seemed pretty run of the mill. But why was Henri thanking Madofsky for being generous? And why was he pleased to represent him? Maybe Madofsky was the owner we've been looking for. It didn't add up. I had a gut feeling. There was something fishy going on. The air vent had a tiny catch on the side. The paper clip was perfect for the job. There was definitely something in there. Now, what are you gotcha? Well, would you believe it? It was a gun. And very likely the one that had been used to shoot Henri. Aha! So, what have we here? L'American, Monsieur Stobart. You will rule the day you crossed my path, because now you are caught in my net like a little red herring. Inspector, I'm investigating the robbery. No, monsieur. You are breaking and entering an innocent storeroom. I found the murder weapon. Found? No. Planted? Yes. Mu, arrest this man and take him to the station. I shall squeeze you, Monsieur Stobart. Until your pips squeak. Thanks, Ronnie. I just wish I'd got some better shots of the killer. Are you kidding? That stuff from the hip is very dramatic. You did good, Nico. So, what's next? Get me an interview with the owner, and you've got Sunday's front page. I'm on it already. Keep me up to speed. Let me know before you write anything up, okay? Of course. Oh, gotta go. Someone at the door. Monsieur? Are you Nicole Collard? Yes, can I help you? I need to sit down. You'd better come in. <laughs> 